أوند وش ميانة بداش اسماء تأتي ملكوتا نهو سويانخ إي كند وش ميا أبار آ حولان لحمة سنكانا يومنا وش وقلان حوبين إي كندا بحنان شوق لحيوين ولا تانا لأنسيونا إلا بصا من بيشا مثل دي لاخي ملكوتا حي لو تشبحتا العالم عالمين Uh, sorry about the the beginning was like my whole bunch of things were coming into my head that I wasn't expecting. But uh, um, anyway, uh, so uh, we what we talked about we we've been talking about is Jesus's freedom teaching is what I titled these sessions because he spent the bulk of his life uh, the the three to five years maybe more uh, the scholars argue about the amount of time it seems like we we've, we've got a condensed version of, of his ministry, but it covered all the key points that he was trying to make. He, he showed up one day, and the first thing he declared was that the kingdom of God is at hand. It's here. It's always been here. We just need to tap in and ma manifest it, participate in it, and bring it, uh, bring it into existence. That's the, the, the power of his gospel. That's the core of his gospel. And a lot of what I've been doing and uh, a lot of what I spent most of the last 25, 30 years doing this work has been focused on that. Uh, and it's a culmination of the people who came before him, but mainly his wisdom. And the people before him uh, borrowed from the cultures uh, around them. So so he, he wasn't just drawing from Jewish history or Jewish tradition, because Jewish tradition itself was interacting with other uh, cultures around them and cultures that were even there b before um, th th that what became known as the Jewish religion. So he, he, he just took all of that in. And luckily in his time, his time was not peaceful time per se, but for his specific area, it was fairly stable. Uh, the, the, the power was in the Roman hands. They, um, they, 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 they ruled, they had given some uh, freedom of pra uh, religious practice to the Jewish people and probably the people around that area. The Romans were smart. They, they basically, if you stopped resisting them, you, you benefited from the, the power of their empire. And you pay the price as well, from taxation to maybe participating in uh, helping their army move around, feeding their army, and sometimes joining their army or voluntarily or not. They, they, they drew from the, those people. So Jesus was observing that, which is, you know, if you, if you think about a lot of uh, the, the hot spots in the world today, the same dynamic takes place there. The, the, the peaceful people tend to be um, mo mainly ignored, but sometimes they do pay a price. When when a bomb falls, uh, whether it was targeting a, a, a building or by mistake, whether it's a friendly fire or a, 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 an actual attack by, by whoever is attacking, it, it, either way, sometimes the meek and, and, and peaceful people do, do suffer during the, the times of conflict and times of war. But they maintain the, their status and powers come in and powers leave and, and those people typically, um, I can't say they benefit because they hurt and, and they, they feel the, the brunt of, of these conflicts. But at the end of the day, after a, a few years, few generations and so forth, they end up thriving again. And some of the voids that are created by what, what took place are, are filled with new opportunities, new, new uh, perspectives. And uh, sometimes even there is a, a, an unintended financial reward sometimes because land that was um, held by, by people who fought and, and so forth are, and no, no longer are alive. Uh, sometimes it's distributed to other family members. And sometimes if the family members are not, no longer there, other people inherited that land. So when, even when Jesus talked about, you know, blessed are the peacemakers, blessed are the meek and the, the ones who will inherit uh, earth. And, and he, 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 he saw that dynamic, how people who maintain meekness, who maintain uh, that the role of peacemakers, people who are mourning but not becoming angry enough and, and, and corrupt enough 
to to go and retaliate and and uh, avenge and, and take revenge and live from that space they they mourn they 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 feel the pain and that pain is real uh, but because of our uh, dynamic nature as human beings the strength that we have the faith that we have uh, in in humanity and in, in nature and and sometimes in our neighbors and and we we tend to pick up the pieces and and move forward again. Jesus saw all of that and he wanted to empower that. So and he he did not wish to see conflict. He did not wish to to face death. He did not in a violent death. He knew death was is, is gonna come one way or another, and he did not fear it. That's why he, he when he taught he he put it all on the line. He did not. Uh, compromise uh, because he wasn't afraid that uh, if his teachings were controversial enough to bring that uh, him death he he was okay with that he was not about possession we we have many episodes where people who join him see how he's thriving because people want that kind of uh, uh, person around them it's a, a person who is positive who's healing people who's talking about the hope and and the future and and how awesome it is now and how we are taking taking care of um people wanted wanted to be around him they fed him they opened up their houses they let him stay there as long as he wanted and he didn't want anything he when when he went to to pray on his own or when he was crossing um, land between villages as he traveled on foot most of the time um he just he, he wanted a little bit of shade he wanted a, a, a comfortable um piece of grass or sand or something where he could you know put his head down he had no worries he had not no worries also about you know his businesses failing or his customers being upset with him he had a very simple approach to his own personal life but people who wanted to join him they they were hoping that because this is a movement because he's a leader of a movement that they will benefit from that and dr erico talked about that where I talked about his, his apostles the last time, how they were walking behind him. After they failed in a healing mission, after they basically were challenged uh, uh, on, on their belief system and, and their, their own ministry by, by the scribes and the Sadducees, they were constantly harassed and they were young and inexperienced. So they, though they were sometimes experiencing failure, they still had the ambition to, to, to think that I'm going to be a minister under his new kingdom. Um, they, they misunderstood it. And, and, and he, he, he got angry with them. He, you'll see it even, even to, to his cross um, that, that, that they, the apostles continued to fall short of his expectations, but yet he had faith in, in that they will, that he's building enough in them, that he's, that, that the kingdom is corrupting them at a core level. And when I say corrupt, is think of it as when, when yeast corrupts uh, flour and makes us bread, that, that kind of corrupt. So something good was happening inside them. And they were learning all these awesome new ways of viewing the world, of saving the world, of healing the world. Of, of of giving us 2,000 plus years later um, this, this um, message of hope. And uh, today I, I read, um, and, and, and I was not surprised, uh, a new study is showing how church, um, not church only, but the Muslim, Jewish, Christians, uh, Protestants and Catholics and and so so many things uh, so so many of these sects and and religious groups are losing attendance and and people are no no longer going to church and that does not speak against what Jesus was teaching it it speaks against what religion has become it, it people are not connecting with it anymore it's we we don't need the the story uh, the, the the super stories, the, the superheroes that we can't match. Uh, we we see real problems. We see a lack of connection. We see that religion against religion is is constantly causing wars and conflict. Uh, that there was that there is a there is a something that we we need help in those areas. I don't want people not to go to church because. It, there is still, if a, if a church can become what it's supposed to be, a place where people come together and bring on those teachings and practice them and teach people how to practice them, 
and bring joy to their lives instead of anger and fear and 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 going i mean a, a lot of even our legal issues these days are driven by uh, Christians. I mean, we we it's, it's common to hear on the news that this Christian group is supporting supporting this judge or legislation and pushing for you know th this kind of change in society. And it's, we, we're using the legal human legal system, the that the, the system that is is faulty and incomplete, and we're trying to leverage it to enforce religious belief and religious belief that's not based on the, the patriarchs and on Jesus' teachings, based on church teachings and, and corrupt church teachings, if, if I may say. So 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 this man is is has has this secret formula that and it's a foundation. It's it's not he, he knew that the world is changing around him. He knew that we will be facing new challenges and and hopefully i'll get to uh, um, all this is kind of coming through and unexpectedly so if if i get to to, to read you that the the parts of the bible i'm talking about you'll see those details that he he was observing so as his ministry is evolving as he's delivering uh, his his parables and and he had many parables about the kingdom so i don't think uh, if he would have left us with 50 more or 100 more parables if he lived a longer life would have made that much different in the core teaching that he was doing. He he did different healing episodes with blind people, with people with skin issues, with people with um, uh, the skin issues. Uh, they called it leprosy. With mental il uh, illness, uh, even with with comas, he he did a lot of work and demonstrated how we can we we are able to heal and we are able to work with healing energy that's available for us. And nowadays we have. Uh, big data and we have AI and and if we use it for the right reasons, we are going to to way surpass uh, in anything we've seen before and we are going to do it quickly. Now, unfortunately, the, I always because I was in the healthcare field and and I, I spent many years there. Sometimes all these things are attached to dollar signs, and if the, if people don't see dollar signs, they tend to move away from from that direction. But I believe that. Regardless, we, the machines are going to figure out things that even if, if we don't make money off them, they're going to tell us the answer. They're going to tell us if you mix these two things and you take them, if you have this kind of condition, you're going to, to do better. If you stop doing that, we have statistics that says 95% of people who do that heal. And I think more, the smart ones will listen to it and we'll, we'll see more healing and, and more healthy people and longer, happier lives. So, so, and and that's foundational in his ministry. In in that, you know, you you need to figure out. It's not about eating too much. Sometimes you need to fast. It's it's not a, you know, and not everybody has to do that. It's not about uh, you know, it's about avoiding stress. It's a, a, about nipping a lot of things that we do. We carry with us a lot of our psychological un unhappiness that we see today. Our loneliness, our depression, and and I've seen data because, as I said, I was in the field. I've seen data of antidepressants and and uh, a, a lot of medications that that are everywhere in in our society uh, and a ton of money is made off that but what is the root cause why are we depressed why are we being diagnosed with with clinical depression why are we diagnosed with a lot of the psychological problems why are we having uh, issues within families and 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 then the bigger uh, stuff that we're dealing with the wars that the the that the split between left and right and far left and far right all these things are are the, the kingdom is here if we tap into it these things will disappear, will dissipate, or they'll they'll shrink at least to a point where we won't need to talk about it every day in the news or every day when we when we meet with our family and friends. That's what Jesus is. That's the hope message that he when he said the kingdom is here. The king that's the kingdom he's talking about. He's not talking about some crown and and some royals and and we watch them you know uh, spending money and and living on yachts. He he's talking about a kingdom that we can all participate in and all be extremely wealthy in. Instead of watching the wealth, we'll be wealthy with our faith, we'll be wealthy with our happiness, we'll be wealthy with our health, we'll be wealthy with our time, and we'll be wealthy with our safety and our love for one another. That, and that's the governing law. It's love. Love yourself, 
And to do that, it's hard. That's why he talks a lot about forgiveness, because we have to work with that. We have to let go of anybody who's, who, who's ever done anything to hurt us. And then we have to work with ourselves and forgive ourselves for our, uh, our uh, falling short in any situation. And then we start blossoming into this free spirit that we are meant to be, like, like we were when we were children and didn't have a worry. That's the direction of the kingdom. That's the direction of the gospel. That's the direction of the message of hope that Jesus came to deliver. It is not the cross. It is not the blood. It's not sacrifice. Those are all teachings that were available before even Abraham and Moses. Abraham and Moses were starting to change that. And it's very strange that the, the pagan uh, religions that Christianity clashed with and ended up losing to brought those teachings and made them the core of what we call Christianity. That is not Jesus. That is modern religious Christianity. That's the Christianity that's losing people. And they've always lost people over centuries. They, they, they thrive for a while during conflicts and they sell tickets to paradise and so forth and, 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 and muster armies to go fight another religion. And, 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 and it feels like that religion is succeeding and people are going to church and so forth. But then in times of, of peace and times of, uh, of prosperity and times of uh, even war, so you'll start finding that th those religions are empty. They, they don't deliver what, what we need from them. And that's, that's why we need, we need to go to these churches and change them from the root, bring them back to the joyful message of Jesus, to the joyful message of the kingdom. So, Good, we have some time. So, so I'll, I'll dive in now and, and talk a little bit about his last few days. Now, now uh, Dr. Erico talked, because we, we had um, Palm Sunday last week, so he talked about his entry to Jerusalem and how he was, he humbled himself and rode on a, uh, a, 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 a donkey. And he, he, he as, a, as, a, as a ruler, as a powerful, um, triumphant ruler, the way we, we try to see Jesus on Palm Sunday in most of the religious uh, institutions, Christian institutions, we see him riding on Jerusalem as, as, a, as a hero, as, a, as a, like a triumphant king. He didn't do that. He came in humbled on a donkey. That's, that's the lowest le level of, of, of animal you can ride in, into a city. So, so he, here he comes, and he has some a good following, which which supports him for a few days. So that the 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 pilgrims that came in from nor, northern uh, Israel at the time, northern Palestine and Galilee, and uh, that the, the ten cities where he you know uh, and Capernaum around the, the Tiberias uh, area and and the, the the Sea of Galilee, all these people have been seeing him, and his ministry is growing. So now we are towards the end of his ministry. So he's been doing this for, as I said, three to five years. So he has a lot of people who have heard of him, seen him heal, interacted with his apostles and disciples. So they're aware of him. So now they're going to do their traditional pilgrimage, which they, they did all, every year, kind of the same way we see it today. We don't see as much of it in, in Christianity today because that the area is not very peaceful and it's divided and it's not easy to travel through. I have never done it and I and I can go do it. I can do it on the Arab side or on on the Jewish side. But I, but I I just don't want that pain of of somebody pointing a gun at me while I'm trying to cross from one side of the street to the other. So one day I'll bite the bullet and do it and hopefully not literally. But. Um, but now, nowadays, people uh, do pilgrimage to Rome, which had nothing to do with Jesus's message. Eventually, Christianity, as I said, they hijacked a lot of it, and now it's you know the center of Christianity is one of the centers of Christianity is is Rome or the Vatican. But in Islam, we see that in Mecca, uh, pe people who who were able, they travel and they they do that pilgrimage once a year. Some people who, who are lucky enough, they can do it multiple times in a lifetime. Some people who are local can do it almost every year. Um, 
and and it's becoming kind of messy because of that the number of people when when Islam was started to the number of people when we are you know fifteen hundred years later it's you know it's 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 a big multiplier change and and Saudi the government now has to deal with a lot of visas and lotteries and so forth um, so so back back to Jesus so here he is at end of his ministry he's 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 built basically his ministry. He taught how to heal. He taught the parables. He talked about forgiveness. He gave us the Lord's Prayer and, and different forms of, of prayer and meditation. So he's, he's delivered his message. Now he can take a little bit more risk. And he's going to the center of Judaism at the time. The temple is the center of Judaism. And it wasn't agreed on. So all along and throughout the history of Judaism, I know I've done uh, the, the, the timeline of the prophets and, and the different states, that, that uh, the, uh, the political states and, and the, the, that time of the judges and so forth. Um, they, they've had a conflict between centering God in a building and, or keeping God free and loose. So, and, and at the time of Jesus, that message was still uh, debated uh, some people who had the power and had the temple under their control, they, they wanted that center. It brought in a lot of money. People brought in sacrifice, so it fed all the staff and all the priests. So it was really good business. Um, and it, it had enough foundation in, the, in, in Moses uh, and, and the sons of Moses and, and uh, uh, sorry, the sons of uh, Aaron and so forth, that, that it, it actually was an institution that had already enough uh, foundation in the Bible to build on. And, and it was easy also, the, the, the bad side of it is when, whenever somebody got angry with, with the Jewish uh, people, they went and destroyed their temple. Uh, the, the, the Babylonians did it, and the Assyrians did it, and they, uh, later after Jesus, the, the Romans did it, and that was the last time there was a, a, a true temple, like historical temple, which now they're finding bits and pieces of it. Um, so, so there is the center, that this building that uh, that is, you know, if you think two thousand years ago, it, it was all marble and beautiful, and was built after the the, the, the Jewish people came back. From Babylon, from from the captivity, and reestablish their their uh, their center of religion. So Jesus is going into this place, and he's taken his apostles and disciples. He's entering Jerusalem as a humble leader of this new movement, uh, a new perspective, and Jewish perspective. He was he wasn't really trying to create a new religion. He was just trying to tell people well a, a few things that are critical. And I'm I'm gonna jump around now because if I do it in in order, I'll never get to the points. Um, and, and hopefully I mark the, the things that I want to say. And I didn't. <clears throat> it's always fun when I do that to myself. Well, you'll, you'll have to trust me. You can go find the, the actual verses. So he, he tells his, his, uh, his, uh, his apostles and disciples that what, what I'm going, what, what, this, the kingdom of heaven will, will have to spread. The kingdom of heaven will have to reach all corners of earth. Okay, so he saw this message as something that's beyond just the Jewish people and the area he grew up in, Jerusalem and Galilee and so forth. He saw this as a, as a, as a solution for our human problems. Now, remember, I'm talking about the end of his ministry. So he, he's, he's, he's taken his final chance to see if he can get the temple people to buy into what he's doing and, and allow him to continue to build, or most likely what he was, was risking is his life and maybe the movement. But he had a strong feeling that his movement was so good and that he touched enough people that it will never die. Okay, so that was his gamble. He, he walked into Jerusalem thinking, this, I, this is strong enough that even without me, it's going to last. So he, he walks into the temple and he starts arguing with them and they start now during those the, the last few chapters in, in Mark and same thing with Matthew uh, you, you'll you'll see that they bring in the uh, the, the Sadducees the Pharisees the scribes uh, the, the the temple uh, leadership they're all present and they're all in conflict with Jesus they're in conflict with each other typically but also now they have a common enemy somebody who's threatening all of their systems 
So they try to trap him. And in every case, when they try to trap him, he works himself out of that problem. The, the, the temple people asked him, uh, that the, this is the leadership, asking him, by what authority? Because they're hierarchical. They, they, they study specific systems and they, they, they get nominated and they are voted in and so forth. So they have a structure of how to become a leader in the temple. Now, and, and sometimes it has to do with your bloodline as well. Now, they, they, they get this, this guy who, who's, you know, questionable at, at best from Galilee. And I say questionable because the people of Galilee were most likely mixed races. But he was Jewish. Nobody questioned that his, uh, his Jewishness. But his, his bloodlines, etc., were always, uh, like all the people in, in Galilee, were a question mark because there was a lot of conquering and mixing of, of populations, etc. So it wasn't as pure as what they tried to maintain in, in uh, Jerusalem, in Judea. So by what authority do you come here and, and, and do all this, uh, speak about God and speak about the religion, about what's good, about the commandments? You, you don't have the credentials. And we have that today in our society. If you're if you're not a PhD, you notice when, when I when I list my name, I, at one point some minister put in you know biblical scholar Hanny, and I was like, oh no 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 no, you can't say scholar. You have to have a degree to be a scholar. So I'm not I'm not a scholar. Uh, and then to to be a reverend, you have to be ordained. And and uh, so so. We, we put a lot of weight on that. Sometimes there are people who are very intuitive and good leaders, and they don't have those titles, and maybe they didn't even go to school. But, but, and we dismiss them. So, so that's, that's what Jesus was dealing with. So they were asking him, what is your authority? And he, he was extremely smart. Um, one, one thing, as, as you read Jesus, pay close attention to the things that are attributed to him. He was very precise in his language. He did not go on like, like me, right? Uh, he, he just very specifically give answers, give parables, sometimes one-liners almost, that, that, that portrayed his thought and, and, and provoked our thinking. And in this case, he said, I will answer you if you answer me the question. And he turned it on them and asked them, is the baptism that John the baptizer was performing from man or is it from God? So he now the, the, this is like a committee quizzing him on his authority. And he said, I'll answer you if you answer me. And they went and he knew their way of thinking. So they said, if we say it's of man, we're in trouble because then all the people who were baptized and he was, John was beloved and he had, he was preaching a good message would be angry with us and, and we would lose that battle. And if we say it's from God, then we would give it a, a power and 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 uh, and, uh, and Jesus in his question, he said, if it was from God, then basically implying, why didn't you follow what he was leading you towards? Why did why did you dismiss him and let him go go get killed by the king? So he trapped them the same way he, they were trying to trap him with this authority thing. So he, they said, well, we don't know. You tell us. And he said, I won't tell you. And then I won't even answer your question because you did not answer my question. So he, he escaped. So now they, they, they made a decision. The, the committee met, all these heads from all these different groups met, and they said, this guy is very dangerous. He is turning, the, the people are loving him, and he's changing things, and he's changing things away from the way we change things. He's, he challenged their, their definition of the Sabbath. He challenged their definition of God. He challenged their definition of the, you know, what the, the role of the temple. And and even as as we see as he as he went into the temple he he started turning tables. Now remember I said it's a good business. So when you have a prophet from Galilee showing up saying you are you turned the house of God, it's okay to have a temple to to honor God and and to go pray and have a place to meet. It's like a super church, but to make it a business center to sell, and, and he was watching how they were cheating people who didn't know the, the, the money system, the, the money exchange, and so forth. They had tables and businesses and selling different uh, pigeons and, and, and goats and sheep and, and so forth, the different sacrifices. And it, it, it was like a market around the temple. So he, he went and he was angry with that. It's like you turned the house of God to a, a place of, uh, of corrupt business. And he, when he started, so, so he really touched, he touched their uh, authority. He touched their their pockets, their livelihood. 
because those those people did not work. They didn't have a job and just came and, and did the temple work. That that's how they ate every day from the sacrifice uh, meat and the donations and and the the, the temple taxes. That that was the, that that was their power. He touched that, but they they could not trap him. So the first day he spent in the temple, he got away and managed to... Now, the, remember, Jerusalem is a city that has gates and, and it's, it's almost like a fortress. To, to this day, it, it feels that way. Um, so the, the, when, when, when it's nighttime, he had to leave the city and he went out to a garden just outside the wall and, and uh, spent the night in Gethsemane. And in Gethsemane, he's sitting with his... Now, now he knows what he started. He knows I, I, I'm in, in the den of, of Judaism. I'm in the center of Judaism, and I already caused trouble in the temple. And they're not changing their mind. Okay, now, I think the next day, uh, that they, they sent the, uh, another group to, to question them. And that group kind of, uh, I, I should find these verses, so bear with me. <clears throat> Yeah, right, right here. So I'm I'm in chapter twelve, and they they sent him now the scribes. Okay, and one of the scribes came near. This is verse twenty eight, chapter twelve, verse twenty eight. Came near and heard them debating. And he saw that he gave them a good answer. So he asked them. So there, there's like the, the, the one before them was the uh, Sadducees. I think I did this where they, they were questioning Jesus uh, if, if uh, you know, in, in the kingdom and in, in heaven after we die, if a, a, man, a woman was married to a man and a man did not have children and his, he has seven brothers and she married the second brother and they did not get kids and blah, blah, blah. So, so they were, you know, trapping him with, with these kind of like minutiae stories about splitting hairs in, in a religious de debatable way. And he, he still basically told them that, you know, we, we'll, we'll be like, we'll be spirits, we'll be angels, we won't be man and woman and, and marriage and all that stuff is, is, you know, the physical stuff is not applicable. So he's talking about spirit. And this is important, so I'm, I'm, I'm glancing over it, but <laughs> I know I've, I've covered it. I know Dr. Erico spent a lot of time about what the, the, the soul and, and, and what happens to us, where we come from and where we go to. So so now somebody else, this is the next group, they're, they're just descending. I can just see him like sitting and, and you know in a corner with his apostles and disciples around them, probably more of protection and, and you know support and these people are coming at him going okay I have a question for you I know how to trap you so so then a scribe comes in and goes okay well that was a good answer those guys you know put their tails between their legs and walked away so so the scribe um and he saw that he gave him a good answer so he asked him which is the first commandment of all so now we're we're going to back to Moses and Jesus said to him the first of all commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is our is one Lord. So there is one God. Islam preaches the same thing. And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your might. So you, you have to basically be fully dedicated to this Allah. Okay, this Ithya Rabbah, this, this, this powerful presence. See, again, if I say God, we have a lot of, 2,000 years later, we have a lot of images in our head of what God is. And 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 because of the, the Semitic languages, we often end up calling him a he or a him. And it's it's not. That, see, so Jesus was very, very you know careful with, with how he was framing this. But then he jumps <clears throat> with all your might. This is the first commandment. So he did not question that, you know, the, the Abba, the Allah is, is, is very important. But then he goes, and the second command, the second is like to it. Okay, so he gives the second commandment uh, power. You must love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. So he basically being fully surrendered in the kingdom of God, in the kingdom of Allah, Malkutha Dallaha, Malkutha Dashmaya. Okay, so if you take it in Aramaic as he's speaking, he's talking about a realm that they could grasp. And 
Today we have religion and religion keeps us from grasping that. That's why I'm using Aramaic. Okay, and then he says, love your neighbor as yourself. Okay, so, and, and neighbor there meant a lot of people. It could, it could mean the Samaritans, it could mean the people next door. And, and as I told you before, the neighborhood in Jesus's time was not as, as segregated or as, as ex exclusive as the neighborhoods uh, um, uh, were like in, in Judea or in, in the time before the Romans conquering. Okay? It wasn't all like a tribe and all the tents are your cousins and, and, and you know, your second cousins. The, you, now you're living amongst Romans and people who are of mixed blood and Samaritans and Phoenicians and so forth. So when you when you take that commandment, the way it was given to Moses, Moses intended it to be tribal and, and close. Jesus is using it as a global, as something that we have to love everybody, including the Roman, including the Phoenician, including the, uh, the, the Samaritan. So, so that, that's very powerful. And the scribe said to him, well, teacher, you have said the truth. So, so the scribe was smart that he is one and that there is no other besides him. So this is the, the oneness of God. So you're not preaching um, idol worship because and that was available. So the Romans, and I'm sure the rumors that these scribes were getting, you know, about this guy in, in Galilee were all over the place. So he, he basically destroyed that rumor, uh, all the rumors, and said, no, I'm coming here to talk about Allah, about Yahweh, about Yah, about the Ithya Rabba. The, the, my loyalty, my, my, my Abba, my Awa, is that. So that's poor. <clears throat> and a man, and that a man should love him with all the heart and with all the mind and with all the soul and with all the might and love his neighbor as himself. This is far more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. Do you see that this scribe is, he knows his Bible. He knows what the prophets have been talking about, uh, about that. That's, that's, that's what, Judaism should be about and then now we're taking it and making it global and we're spreading it to all of our neighbors he loved it he absolutely loved it he's like you know they sent him to go fight and trap and instead he became a part of the movement <clears throat> when Jesus saw that he replied see Jesus wisely he replied wisely he answered saying to him you are not far from the kingdom of God and no man dared again to question him. So he told him, you are not far from the kingdom. You got the kingdom. You know, I, I didn't have to teach you that. You came with a question. You knew your Bible. And boom, it clicked. Okay, that's that's the power of the kingdom. That's the simplicity of it, too. So, you know, he didn't have to go to, to Jesus' school for four years and, and get a diploma and graduate. He, he got it. He had it in him. The kingdom is always in us. And that's what Jesus was it's like. I, I don't need to say anything else. And everybody who was coming to attack him now, because it was one after the other, and and this was last one, and they were going, "Oh God, he's the scribe had nothing to say." And not only that, the scribe is in the kingdom. So the the guy who's coming as an enemy is now a part of it. So. And Jesus answered, saying, as he taught in the temple, how do the scribes say that Christ is the son of David? Now, this is important because the, 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 the thing that happens in, in, the, in the Near East, and, and I don't know if uh, I don't see it as much in the West, but if, if throughout the Bible, people try, there, there is like a, a, a concept of people who are important coming back in, in another person. Uh, there is, you, you, I, I don't want to dive into like uh, other religions, but in if you look at Near Eastern religion, they were always thinking that this guy is, oh, just like that guy was, or this guy is that guy coming, and his coming means that somebody else is going to come right after him, because that's the sequence that we saw in our history. And 
it has two sides. One side is that th there is a cyclical nature to, to uh, our existence for some reason. We tend to repeat the same situations and problems and wars and conflicts, and we have saviors that come along the way or bad people who come and capitalize on that and cause more trouble. So, so And then we affiliate that. We say, oh, this is the next blah. And oh, if we, if we get the next blah, guess what? Blah defeated them. Um, so we are... It's a matter of time now. We're watching for qualities in somebody who can defeat that person, and then we attribute that's like, oh, it's basically almost like reincarnation. Uh, but they don't believe in reincarnation. But with these kind of people, it it is it's there. So the the next verse is or the next few verses is that they they thought that the the Messiah. The, so now we're talking about two different things. Jesus, the man, is the one sitting in the corner answering these questions. Okay, but they wanted him to be from the line of David. If he was going to be the, the, the king that is going to save them and reestablish the, the Jewish kingdom and, and that, that, that power and, and get rid of the Romans, etc., he, he had to be from, from the line of David, the, the bloodline of David. Okay, so, so then he, he's going like, okay, how do you expect? This is, let's, let's read what he's saying. For David, continuing from there. <clears throat> And Jesus answered, saying, as he taught in the temple, how do the scribes say the Christ is the son of David? See, the scribes had that built in. It has to be from, so they're watching the line of David, and they're waiting for somebody from that family to show up. And he's trying to, to tell them that that bloodline is not important. For David himself said through the Holy Spirit, the Lord said to my Lord, sit on my right hand until I put your enemies as a stool under your feet. Now, therefore, David himself calls him my Lord. And how can he be his son? So now, now Jesus is doing basically uh, um, using the same logic they're using against them. It's like, you, you know, nobody questioned that the Messiah, that the next Christ is going to be from the line of David. They're asking about his authority. He couldn't walk into Jerusalem and say, oh, hello, I'm from the line of David. They all said, oh, okay, check, right? Or I studied with these, you know, uh, rabbis and, and I have my diploma and they said, oh, check. He didn't have that. Okay, so, so now there is another aspect of it, the line of David. But he's saying that, how, what kind of logic are you using is that, that the Messiah, the Christ, is going to be a son of David if he's because the Christ is bigger. It's a it's a it's a consciousness. It's not a, a person. And you you have now David was a Christ was a Messiah because he was anointed for the mission for to become the king of of uh, of Israel uh, or or king of of the Jewish state at, at the time as was the king before him as the king that the kings that came after him. So people were anointed. So, so Jesus is, is here is kind of dismantling that idea that bloodlines are important and that they have to be from the line of David. Now, that, this is why I told you I like Mark a little bit more in, in its directness than uh, Matthew and Luke is because they have the birth story and they try, they, they added it later. See, they didn't need to add it because Jesus said it's not important, but they added it anyway just for the people who said the Messiah has to be from the line of David. It's like, oh, we tied Jesus. And they did it two different ways, by the way. So if, if you have time, I, I don't like reading that section, that, that part in, in, in the Bible, but it, that that's why it was put there, is because even though Jesus kind of took, took care of it, they brought it back and, and took care of it and, and, you know, like extra carefully in, in case somebody questions it. Done. Uh, that Jesus was not around when that was done. <clears throat> so how can it be his son? And all the people heard him with pleasure. So people liked his his way of of uh, of speaking. So and and in his teachings, he said to them, "Beware of the scribes who like to walk in long robes and love to be saluted in the streets." and take the front seat in the synagogues and the head places at banquets. 
so 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 it's continuing to teach it's going like just because you come from religious authority the scribes were the educated ones who could read the bible who took notes who who, who, who actually dealt with a lot of things including the next uh, episode that he talks about um okay i'm gonna i have one question so I, I'll, I'll keep speaking if you have questions please use the q a um button on, on your app or uh, your computer or your phone um, and if not, I'll just keep going. There, there's a, a one question so far. So, so what Jesus is is got, the next episode is talking about because the scribes were hired by people, uh, by widows, who uh, illiterate people, to help them with their business, to take care of some things, and and they usually some of them were corrupt and they stole from these people without knowing that without the people knowing that they were stealing from them or they were okay with it because they not, had no other choice so it's like okay you know take your 20 percent commission or whatever commission uh, away it's better than not having anybody helping me with 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 my uh uh my business my my money handling etc so but he was warning that even the scribes so so he, he didn't want that one scribe that, that got the check mark and said, you, you know, you're very close to the kingdom to become like, OK, scribes are close to the kingdom. He, he still said, you have to be very careful. In, in, in these last few chapters, he constantly warned his uh, disciples about what's coming and about the situations that they will run into as they move forward. He, he knew that that the Romans are uh, are hitting basically the limit with all these insurrections and problems and even when they took jesus to to uh to pilot because they couldn't they could do they could condemn him but they could not kill him without the roman authority the, the romans controlled that the death sentence so when when they took him to uh pilot pilot because it was a holiday and it was that the uh the tradition is to let somebody go we do that here uh, to, to this day in almost all the countries in the world when there are big holidays the, uh, the whoever is in authority, whether it's a king or a president, or, or you know, they, they tend to kind of feel magnanimous and and let people out who are in jail for you know, served a period of time, you know, the, enough of their sentence, or they know somebody who says they're good or they're sick and they need to get out of jail. So we so it, at the time, Pilate said, hey, this dude, as as they were, and I'm I'm jumping over a lot of things. That, uh, ho hopefully, Doctor Erico, or I'll I'll, I'll cover it uh, some uh, as as we continue moving through Mark. Um, he he tells them, dude, this dude that doesn't sound like he's done anything bad, and Jesus chose not to defend himself uh, when when they condemned him to death. So it's like I can let him go. It's like you know, and there are enough of his supporters here that that would be a good thing. But they chose an insurrectionist, a, a, a rebel who was in jail, uh, to, in, instead of Jesus. So, so, but that tells you that there were rebels in the jails of the Romans. That the, the situation was not as stable as we want to think it, it, it was, or as, as so Jesus could see that it's a matter of time. So he warns his believers. He said, "Stay the course." These teachings, you 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 go through a lot of trouble, but you will come out winning. You'll come out with not, not winning as in winning in a war. You're winning by maintaining your life and continuing to be able to spread the news of the kingdom. And it it's it's throughout these chapters because they were thinking we're going to Jerusalem. He's going to declare himself a king, and that's why. Um, he, he was given up by one of his own uh, 12, that, that, that the apostles, one of the closest ones to him. Uh, Judas was like, you know, let's ignite this thing. And he thought if they came to arrest him, that that's that's it. He'll declare himself the, the Messiah, the king, and, and all will be good. And he'll defeat everybody and all the things that they were waiting for will, will happen. And they'll become his ministers and they'll all get castles and, and wives and concubines and so forth. That was their thinking. And he was like, no. And even at the, the moment of his arrest, one of one of them, uh, one of the, his followers, uh, and, and Mark it doesn't say who it was, it had, had hidden a sword. See, Jesus did not allow them to carry weapons with them. He, he did not believe in that. But he carried a sword and he chopped an ear of one of the people who were coming to arrest Jesus. You know, Jesus told them to put it away. We're, we're not going to do it that way. We're, see, he, he was like, okay, I, I delivered the method. I'm not going to go now and change it or, or run away from it because, uh, you know, my life is being threatened. 
So to, to the end, he did not get into debate. When they asked him questions about his beliefs, he was either to, uh, went silent and refused to answer them or told them, you said so. When they accused him of being the king of the Jews, he said, you said so, the son of God, you said so. So, And, and I think there was a language barrier. We see it in, in Peter. Uh, when when he when when Jesus was arrested, Peter was now now think about this. I I, I told you how the apostles even to, to the time when he's he's being arrested and on uh, go, going to the cross, they still hadn't gotten it yet. And that's that's the power of of Easter is that when he actually left them physically, is when they went into fear, they ran away, and he told them right before he said. I'll, I'll see you in Galilee. And it's like, I, and that's just, uh, he was thinking, you, you will get me, but not now. You're, you're not going to understand what I'm going through. And you still don't even understand fully what the kingdom is. I have to leave you for you to be able to stand on your own feet. And, and we see that in our personal experience. If, if, if one of us is the best swimmer, and somebody is drowning, we all look at the best swimmer to jump in and save the person who's drowning. And even though we might be good swimmers or have been studying with this uh, great swimmer for years, odds are we are going to delegate to, to the best. And that was happening with Jesus throughout his ministry, healing, teaching, everything. They were looking at him. And he knew that at some point that best swimmer is either going to retire and not show up at the pool or not show up at the beach. And somebody's going to be drowning and they're going to look at each other and go like, oh, crap, it's on us. We've been studying this for the last three, five years. One of us is going to run in and is going to do well enough and going to bring that person who is drowning. That's it. That, so Jesus knew that that was it, it, it had to happen. And he wasn't resistant. He was afraid of that. To, to, um, but, but we see him also in Gethsemane. He prayed. And, and that's also a, a two-sided. If you read the story just about the prayer of Jesus, you'll see that he's struggling. He's asking God, it's like, you know, is there a way for this to continue to move forward without me being arrested and getting in, in, in trouble and possibly die? And he was in, de he was in deep surrender. And, and, he, and he, he knew that moment was possibly coming. And then he went and he told his apostles during that time, it's like, hey, keep your eyes open, stay awake, because they might be coming after me. And so he went to prayer with this very, very hard prayer, very hard moment in his life. And he goes back to the apostles and they fell asleep. You know, they didn't guard him. They didn't keep an eye out to watch, watching for the, the soldiers coming to arrest him. And he, he woke him up and said, hey, I'm only here with you, you know, for a very short period of time. To be be you know stay awake and then he went back into prayer and he came back and they fell asleep again so they weren't getting it can you imagine this was like your last few minutes with jesus and you fall asleep and he asks you not to and tells you to protect him and you fall asleep and then a few moments later and, and peter is like if they come after you i'll stand by you i'll be right there and there's another one who's like uh, in his sleep clothes he took his main clothes off and he had some linens on it might, might have been a, a warm night in in jerusalem and then when they came to arrest him that uh, he, he he even let them take the linens off him and he ran naked uh which for jewish people to to be seen naked is is a you know big big deal uh but uh, he so everybody who was around them denied him, ran away, and, and left him alone. So those apostles who were swearing their life and thinking they're going to be ministers, they, they, they all, in, in their own way, uh, abandoned him at that moment. He did not, he knew it was coming, he was okay with it, and then when he went all the way to the cross, he, he still stayed in, in faith, stayed true, did not show weakness or regret. He, he to, to the moment he took his last breath, he said, God, God, Eli, Eli. And see, when they heard Eli, Eli, they heard uh, Elia, Elia, which is Elijah. They thought, oh, is he calling Elijah? No, he was talking to God. He said, God, God, for this you had kept me. And that was the end of his ministry. He, 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 he died true to his teachings, 
true to that that everything he stood by and he showed us and that's why this stuff has to continue to move forward as he predicted and jerusalem got destroyed in the year 70 AD, the Romans got fed up. They destroyed the, the temple. And a lot of uh, his followers lost their lives. The movement was shaken, but it lasted. It lasted and it thrived. And then it threatened the Roman Empire because of its peace teaching, because of its love teaching. So that so luckily, the gospel was, and, and the message of, of Jesus of Nazareth, continued to live to this day. So when you go into Easter, I know the churches and, and the news and the movies and everything is going to be talking about his death and the sacrifice and sin and and, uh, and the three days or two days and three nights, whatever the number, you know, the, there's always a debate about how many, you know, how, how could it go from like Friday to Sunday is two days, not three. Uh, all, all that stuff is not important. What's important is his teachings, is the stuff we've been going through up to the moment of his death on the cross. So happy Easter, and I'm so glad that you're spending your time with us. I uh, uh, We have three minutes. I'll, I'll try to hit some of uh, the questions, but I, I doubt that. You know what? I'll, I'll leave the questions to next time. So for now, um, enjoy the rest of your evening. Really appreciate your support. Appreciate your time with, with me. I know it's, it's the biggest asset you have. So when you dedicate this extra hour of your of your time, to come and, and be with us and 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 enjoy Jesus, enjoy the, the gospel and uh, and be in the kingdom. And so take it, spread it, and we'll see you next um, week.